these relative errors or relative rates of change are so important in applications, it's worth taking a few moments to remember how these work. Relative rates of change show up in particular when you're talking about percentage changes or percentage errors. Oh, I only know these inputs with 1% accuracy. With what percentage accuracy do I know the output? So let's say you've got some uh, quantity, some, some u. The relative rate of change of u is the derivative of the log of u. That is, in differential form, it's du over u. Now think about this from an approximation point of view. du is like the, 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 the change or the error, and u is the net amount. So du over u is really representing a percentage change or a percentage error. Let's take a look at how this works again. Ooh, I love beams. Let's, let's push on some beams and deflect them and consider how that beam deflection varies with measurement errors. So here's the setup for the problem. I've got a beam and I push on it in the middle and I want to measure the elastic deformation or deflection U at the center of the beam. Let's assume it's loaded in the middle and supported on the two ends. That deflection U is given by FL cubed over 48 times E times I. F is the force. L is the length of the beam. E is a constant related to the elasticity of the material. We're gonna forget about that. And that last term, I, is a cross-sectional moment of inertia. Let's assume it's a rectangular beam of width W, height H, then that moment of inertia is given by WH cubed over 12. Wow, that's a lot of variables going on here. And let's say that I know each of these variables up to a 2% error. What is the net uh, impact the net percentage error on the beam deflection U. Is it 2%? Is it, is it more than 2%? Um, how much more? How do we figure that out? We were fiddling around with this in a previous example. Now we're going to do it for real using relative rates of change. So let's take that formula for U and substitute in what we have for i, and now we get a function u equals fl cubed over 4 times e times wh cubed. We're going to consider e a constant, everything else a variable. Now I want you to take some time, go compute du using implicit differentiation. It's going to require some partial derivatives and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a mess. Ooh, L cubed over 4E WH cubed DF plus 3FL squared over 4E WH cubed DL minus FL cubed over 4E W squared H cubed DW minus 3FL cubed over 4E WH to the fourth DH. Oh, wow, that's difficult. And then, then what we need to do is the relative rate of error. We need to take DU divided by U. Oh, this is going to hurt so bad. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not. Look, there's going to be a whole bunch of magical cancellation going on. And what we're going to get is df over f plus 3dl over l minus dw over w minus 3dh over h. Check it. Check it. Make sure it works. It's, it's beautiful, this wonderful cancellation. And what this means is that if we have a 2% error, plus or minus, on each of these variables, the, the df over f, the dl over l, et cetera, et cetera, is uh, 2%, then what that means is that du over u is at worst, at most, 16%, right? That's, that's 2 plus 3 times 2 minus negative 2 minus 3 times negative 2. That's exactly how much u can vary. It can be at worst 16%. And notice also how sensitive this uh, error in u is to the different variables. It's relatively uh, not so sensitive to the force, f, and the uh, width of the beam, w, but the length, l, and the height of the beam, h, ooh, uh, du over u, depends much more sensitively on that. And if you look at what we have in this magical cancellation, you can, you can sort of start seeing a pattern here, especially if you do some more problems this way, that the output relative rate of change is a linear combination of the relative rates of change of the inputs. Why? 
let's make the problem harder in order to see. Let's say that instead of four variables, I have n variables, x1 up through xn. And let's assume a general form for you that it's some constant k times the uh, products of various powers of the xi variables. Let's say those powers are c sub i. That's exactly what we had last time, where those c sub i's were equal to 1 or 3, or negative 1 or negative 3. Now, compute the relative rate du over u. And remember, that's the derivative of the natural log of u. Why is that important? Ooh, now we're going to do some log rules, right? The log of the product is the sum of the logs. And now I differentiate that using the fact that the derivative is linear. What's the derivative of log of a constant? It's zero, so forget about that k. What's the derivative of the sum of the logs of xi's to various powers? I pull the powers, c sub i, out in front. And now I have uh, the sum of c sub i's times the derivatives of the logs of the xi's. Oh, but those are the relative rates of change by definition. I get the sum, i goes from 1 to n, of c i times d x i over x i. That's it. That means that the relative rate of change of u is a linear combination of the relative rate to change of the input variables where the coefficients out in front are the powers. That is so powerful. That is so satisfying and so useful in applications.